Okay, let's welcome back to the program. Uh, Congressman Eli Crane represents Congressional District 2. Uh, Congressman, I, I assume, and you know what they say about assuming, that you were you were one of the 108 to vote down the continuing resolution here over the weekend. How you doing? I'm doing good, Jeff. Thanks for having me on. And yes, I was one of the 108 Republicans that opposed uh, kicking the can down the road one more time. One more. Okay. One more time. I was looking at these numbers and we haven't had a spending bill, all the spending bills complete on completed on time in this country for 20 years. Um, and we've only done it four times in the last 40 years. What's going on? Because I thought that this new speaker to replace the other speaker was going to be different and we were going to get the spending issue under control. What, what happened this time? Well, you're right, Jeff. And honestly, we were all hoping that uh, Mike Johnson would be different. Um, so far, he hasn't shown um, much different, you know, much different behavior than the last guy. And, you know, and this just proves the point that this wasn't a personal thing with Kevin McCarthy. And that's why I'll sit here and try and call balls and strikes on this speaker as well. Um, Mike Johnson's a nice guy. But hey, this ain't a popularity contest, Jeff, as you know, this is about trying to save this country and turn it back in the right direction. And we will not do that if uh, we don't have leadership that has courage and leadership that doesn't continually surround themselves with individuals that are constantly telling him or her why we cannot do uh, the right thing. And that's exactly, I've been in the room. I've been in these meetings, Jeff, with, you know, Speaker Johnson, a few conservatives, a bunch of, you know, regular moderate Republicans who continually tell him why he can't, why he can't, you know, attach border security um, to a funding deal, why he can't uh, stop spending money that we don't have, why he can't reform FISA. And a lot of it, Jeff, just comes down to who are your confidants? Who are you listening to? And unfortunately, right now, in my opinion, Mike Johnson is listening to the wrong people. I guess these offices, like many places, I was told that, you know, you get into city hall, for example, don't that the staff will just wait you out until you leave and somebody else comes in. I mean, is it just that, like you said, they're surrounded by people that the office comes with all the, um, clinger ons in government or what did, what did Melee say in, uh, in Davos, the, the parasites? I mean, is that what's going on here? Uh, that's a big part of it, Jeff. And it, I'm glad you brought it up because most people never do. I mean, if you think about it, the bureaucrats, and some people call it the fourth branch of government, um, right? It's a problem because those guys and gals, they're not elected by anybody. They'll, they'll be up in Washington, D.C. for 10 or 15 or 20 years when, you know, a congressman's, you know, term is two years, you know, and, and that doesn't mean that you won't get more than one term, but a senator is six years. And so the way these guys see it is there's a good chance that this individual who's you know, um, requesting, you know, whatever information for us right now that might be damning to, you know, this administration. If we, if we stonewall them, if we hold out on them, don't give it to them, there's a good chance that they'll be gone um, by the time some, you know, j judge somewhere forces us to uh, turn it over. What did we get with this continuing resolution? I had heard that it was pushing a can forward till March on the spending. And again, this is the discretionary portion of the budget, which you guys only control like a third, if that 30% of the actual spending at this point, everything else is on auto control uh, or cruise control, uh, including the, the national debt that's, that's just spiraling out of control. What did we get? What, what, what happens now in March? Well, honest, if I'm being honest with you, Jeff, and that's hope, hopefully something I continually come on your show and do, I think you're going to see the exact same thing. Yep. The, first, the, closer this, the closer this thing gets to election, everybody knows it. If you've studied you know, these cycles over the course of you know, multiple years, the closer it gets to election, the less likely our, people are to fight. I even saw that as one of the big excuses as I was sitting at the table watching and participating in these negoti negotiations going back and forth. You know, one member told Mike Johnson, hey, the last thing you need to do, President Trump does not want to be, you know, um, he's doing, you know, his campaign um, in the midst of a government shutdown. It was one of the fear mongering tactics that was used to keep Speaker Johnson from actually, you know, trying to do the right thing for the American people. That's too bad. It's just the same old game keeps happening over and over again. Meanwhile, uh, national debt topped 34 trillion beginning of this year. We've added 57 
billion just in the past three weeks. It's just the numbers are absolutely insane. And you were trying to get, uh, Eli, you were trying to get border security in there because we have an invasion that's going on in this country. Everybody sees it now. Even Democrats and leftists have to admit that this is happening, uh, although they have, I think, a different outcome plan than maybe you and I do. Um, But we see the fentanyl coming through. Um, I hear this story about uh, the CBP-1 app where, you know, illegals are supposedly flying without proper ID and even getting in front of Americans. I mean, you sat down with somebody uh, in Prescott that had a tragedy when it comes to the fentanyl issue as well. Mm -hmm. What was happening there? I mean, that's pouring through the borders too. Yeah. You know, uh, probably uh, it was probably like seven or eight months ago. I was at a town hall in Yavapai uh, County and uh, a a beautiful lady named Josephine Dunn, um, you know, during the Q and a portion confronted me and she said, what are you going to do about it? you know, this, this border issue. And I went through and, you know, told her what, what we were doing, what we were trying to do about it. And she made sure that, um, that I understood that, you know, um, the severity of this issue. And so it was an honor to be able to have her come up to testify before the, uh, Homeland Security Committee this last week with another mother who had lost her daughter to an MS-13 gang member, Jeff, that had been, who had been let through under Secretary Mayorkas and Joe Biden, who had raped her daughter hmm. and then murdered her daughter. And so Secretary Mayorkas was invited to be there. Of course, he wasn't there. Um, but, you know, we're trying to, we're trying to do everything that we can, Jeff, whether it's legislatively with HR2, some of the conservatives are trying to deny, you know, the power of the purse and, and, you know, the money. Um, you know, to this administration if they don't secure the border. Um, and then we're trying to also do it um, through oversight and impeachment right now. We're trying to impeach Secretary Mayorkas, even though we failed a couple couple weeks ago because the Republicans didn't vote to impeach Secretary Mayorkas. We're taking another shot at it. The chairman says that we have the votes, um, and I'm hoping that we do because, uh, you know, Jeff, a lot of people say even if you guys impeach Secretary Mayorkas, there's a good chance is you're going to get somebody just as bad, you know, or worse. And to me, that's like saying the quiet part out loud. Yes. The Democrat party right now is their policies are so bad that it, and and it's, there's so much totalitarian top down control in that party. It really doesn't matter who you put in there. They're going to do exactly what Joe Biden wants them to do. They're going to do exactly what their globalist masters want them to do and have a wide open Southern border. But that does not mean Jeff, that we should not hold secretary Mayorkas accountable. I want that impeachment asterisk, uh, you know, in his, in his resume, on his legacy for the rest of his life, because it's never, it's never happened. Um, or it, it hasn't happened in like a hundred years. So, I, I want to make sure that he's held accountable. You mentioned, and we're talking with Congressman Eli Crane, you mentioned, you know, whatever Biden wants to do, but I mean, isn't that part of the puzzle even interchangeable as well? Do you, do you think he's actually, just to change a little bit to presidential politics, uh, Congressman, because it means so much, obviously, in, in all of our world, especially your world when you're trying to pass a budget, do you actually think he'll be the, the nominee going up, presumably, against Trump, or do you think that somebody else, uh, the Democrats will put somebody in because they realize how miserably un, unpopular this guy is across the country you know jeff i wouldn't be surprised to see it go either way um you know i wouldn't be surprised to see a you know michelle obama or a gavin newsom get switched <laughs> you know at the last <laughs> second <laughs> Um, but, but I also, <laughs> uh, the worst uh, governor in the, in the in the nation gavin newsom i i just i can't fathom it but go on yeah but he's one of the he's one of the guys that has been you know, campaigning, he tried to debate DeSantis, right? He's holding, you know, hosting, you know, uh, Chinese, um, you know, dictator, she there in, in San Francisco, along with, the, you know, some of our biggest, you know, financial donors, yeah. um, you know, in the country. So uh, he's definitely, he's definitely in the conversation. But the other thing too, Jeff, that we can't overlook is even though um, the current president, President Joe Biden doesn't know where he is, He's clearly not calling the shots and can barely string together a sentence. If you look at it from, you know, unconventionally, he's the best fall guy in the world because they can, they can implement, you know, their, their wild leftist destructive agenda. And then they have the, you know, as the country goes down and is destroyed, they have, they can blame it on this 
this old man that doesn't know where he is. And, you know, I, I know a lot of people aren't, aren't willing to be that cynical about it, but you know, when, when you understand the people that are up in Washington, DC, and you know what they're really after, they don't really care about the optics of whether the leader of their party is a stumbling, bumbling idiot. All they care about is one thing, Jeff, and that is power. And if Joe Biden helps them achieve that, you know, they, they don't really care. Yeah. Keep that power going. Um, another uh, issue that you're looking into, uh, Congressman, is you wrote a letter to DA Alvin Bragg, and this was the um, issue with Daniel Penny. Um, re- remind us what happened there, because remember, we all have about a 22 and a half second attention span, and we are bombarded so much that, uh, intentionally so, I think, that every story just is buried within a, a half a news cycle at this point. Tell us what happened there with Daniel Penny. Yeah, well, many of your viewers will remember the story, and the name probably rings, rings a bell, but Daniel Penny was the Marine who heroically on, on, a, on a train in New York City um, confronted, subdued um, a, a, an individual who was, you know, screaming and, you know, acting wildly and making threats towards other passengers who were scared to death. And some of them even got off the train. Um, and Daniel Penny, unfortunately, after subduing this, this individual and getting him into a chokehold, uh, this individual, um, ended up passing. And so Daniel Penny, um, is now being charged with uh, second degree manslaughter. And so our letter is, Honestly, Jeff, our letter is more of one expressing, you know, concern about, um, you know, this uh, this Marine Daniel Penny um, and the charges that he just received for manslaughter to the DA um, Alvin Bragg. And unfortunately, so often, Jeff, you know, we try and we try and wield, um, you know, the influence of our office in every way, shape possible. I know the American people when they look at that story. And they look at this lunatic who got on a train station and started threatening people. Many of many of your listeners can put themselves on that subway and understand how much fear those passengers felt. And they would have wanted somebody, a good Samaritan, to step up and ensure that, you know, he was saying that someone's, that the gentleman that uh, ended up losing his life, you know, um, he was saying somebody's going to die today. And so, um, this Marine took him seriously and actually went and did something about it. And now he's going to spend, you know, many years of his life behind bars for protecting others, which is what he was taught to do in the Marine Corps. And, uh, you know, so we're just trying to do everything that we can to not only shine a light on this, this issue that's not over and done with, um, but um, we're trying to, you know, do what we can to make sure that um, the, DA there knows that we're still paying attention and we're still watching this story. Well, there's two things there. I mean, which state you live in matters because uh, many states like Arizona is much more um, uh, sympathetic to people protecting themselves, castle doctrine, whatever you want to call it. Um, But if your life is threatened, but then other states like New York and leftist states, if you do something, you have to worry that you're going to be the one that goes uh, into jail. No matter what, you're probably spending a lot of time um, fighting these issues. And, and um, if you have to take hands, uh, you take matters into your own hand. But in states like that, it almost encourages people to just sit there with their cell phones taking pictures while someone is being beaten, murdered, or whatever. You've seen, you've seen this stuff happening. It, it, it's, there's no incentive for the uh, Good Samaritan to step in, Eli. No, you're right. And, and, and what adds insult to injury, Jeff, is that this soft on crime, you know, prosecutor, um, Alvin Brad, when he doesn't prosecute, you know, these crimes that are happening and it, the citizens he's supposed to be protecting are being victimized. Um, this is, this is what ends up, you know, going on regularly. And so to your point, Jeff, you know, you've got citizens who end up because they're so afraid of actually doing something and then being, you know, prosecuted or charged themselves. Meanwhile, these individuals who are running and doing these smash and grabs and, you know, running out of these stores with, you know, as long as they don't have, you know, more than $950 worth of merchandise, you know, it's not, it's not a felony and they completely get away with it. And then they're doing it the next day. So people just end up, you know, watching this stuff happen 
And, uh, you know, the, the, vic- the victims are the actual people in the community who pay their taxes, just want to raise their families. Um, and you know, they're the ones that suffer the most. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Congressman, Hey, I, I appreciate the time as always keep up the good work, keep us, uh, and, and I appreciate you keeping us informed all the time. And we'll talk with you again real soon. Thank you, Jeff. Appreciate it. Thanks for watching this video. Thank you to uh, everyone listening on the podcast as well. Do me a favor right now. Please subscribe. I appreciate everybody that's doing it. Subscribe, 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 and share with your friends. If you've already done that, leave a comment. That helps us out a lot, and we'll see you back here real soon.